Dial 911. Tell the police to get up here quick. Somebody's about to get killed. You get your bus to school, you hear me? Yeah. All right. Day, sir, you feeling all right? Not to get too personal, but a white man standing in the middle of Harlem wearing a sign that says, I hate niggas, has either got some serious personal issues or not all his dogs are barking. Hey, I'm talking to you. Now you got about 10 seconds before those guys see you. When they do, they will kill you, you understand? You are about to have a very bad day. Tell me about it. Sir, this is a police matter for your own safety and relationship. You're damn right it's a police matter for your own safety. I suggest you hide your butt in my shop till the police get here. What the fuck? <laughs> Somebody blew up on with tellers an hour ago. Did you hear about that on the news? Yeah. The same asshole did that said, I gotta come to Harlem and do this, so he's gonna blow up something else. Do you understand? She said, I got a gun. You they gotta cross the street. Gun. You should get across the street. Start acting crazy, what? All right? Like Looney Tunes, you know, like Bellevue. He's six. A friend of yours? He looked like a friend of mine. I think the dude just escaped from some hospital, you know? Like Bellevue. I am the... Voice of my own God. My God. Like Brandon, I have a bad headache, but she can believe me. I really do have a bad headache, though. I have a very bad headache, and my head is not. Nature born here hates me. Now, what are we going to do about that? Jensen Zarbeline coming back to with another film review, and this time we're moving on to number three of the Die Hard. Uh, I would say saga at this point. So, Jesus. 
Die Hard with a Vengeance. So this was actually really um, the Die Hard that I that really struck a chord with me, um, and then it made me go back and watch the rest of the stuff. I remember watching at one of my friends' house, and it was good. It was really good. Um, the film picks up to where uh, John is back in New York because we always hear him talking about he's a New York cop, but we never see him in New York. So this film takes place in New York. He's not with uh, Hallie anymore. I think they're separated. I don't think they're divorced yet. Um, he's coming off a of suspension, and this guy is blowing up places, setting out bombs in certain parts of New York. And at some point, he comes into contact with Samuel Jackson's character, and then they end up doing like this buddy, you know, a civilian cop thing, trying to thwart this guy and stop him from setting off more bombs. Um, and the film is. Technically, I remember watching the making of this film at some point later, and the director said, this is technically part Die Hard 2, um, at least in his mind. He, he didn't really blast the second Die Hard film, but this is really the, the sequel. The, he felt this was the proper sequel for Die Hard, whatever that means. And the villain is just as good. It was better to me than the second villain. Jeremy Irons was great. Everybody the cast was great. The story was great. The action was better than 2. Um, I think the violence was still the same. The language was a lot more racial, I think, this time around. But I didn't care about that. Um, as far as my rating for the film, I give it a 10 out of 10 yes sirs. Die Hard 3 is my favorite of the bunch. I loved everything about it. Um, and it's interesting because I wonder if Pulp Fiction had a hand in why Samuel Jackson ended up working with Bruce Willis on this because of the chemistry he did with John Travolta in that film. I wonder if that played a part in that. Um, there wasn't anything I didn't like. Uh, I do think... Um, I always feel like Die Hard 3 was kind of like the mecca, like as as far as reaching the story-wise. I think that was that's the... The high point of the Die Hard series to where the first one started it and then 3 was almost like as far as they could go to make it just um, as good. Because I'm not saying 4, well 5, it was, it was an entirely different beast, but 4 um, had it had some strong elements but it had some issues with it as opposed to 3. I didn't. I think 3 was really a, a perfect film for the Die Hards. Uh, and the one thing I liked is that the women, and, and but this was also in the other Die Hards, is that the women, and the one thing I like about um, the films I review that I really enjoy is like when they have strong characters. You know, they're 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 not poorly written. They're not damsels in distress. They're not idiots. They're not buffoons. Especially if it's a comedy, that's different. But this was clearly not a comedy. Um, even the woman who didn't talk, she. Her presence was was very scary. Very, uh, you do not want to mess with this chick. She just gave that uh, vibe. And as far as uh, the villain Jeremy Irons, just how he portrayed himself was very calculating, um, very uh, subtle, and he never did anything based off of emotion. Even at one point. When he had an opportunity to, to kill Samuel Jackson's character, they were just like, you know, mm -mm. it was one of those things. And he, he, it, you could see that he was, even though he was, um, you know, like ex military kind of thing, he still had some sense of humanity that he just doesn't kill people to kill people. Actually, um, I don't think. Maybe the first bomb that goes off, but I don't think past that point, I don't think any bombs that went off directly killed anybody. It might have caused some people some stress, but he was, I think he was just blowing up infrastructures that weren't populated, but he would threaten that he would do that, but he never actually did any of that. And that's one thing that was addressed in the film too, um, when he's like, uh, you know, when something comes out, it's not totally true. He was like, yeah course not is like I'm not a monster except sometimes I work for monsters so you could see that he he was still a, a, you know, a villain and a criminal but he kind of had a lot of morale about him like 
this is a guy you could probably meet in a in a in a, pl- in a place out in the open, and a, you know you can have a conversation with him and just keep it moving. But you never know that this guy is is uh, is military and, and has been a part of some some type of warfare and criminal warfare. You never know just from talking to the guy because the way he carries himself, his mannerisms, um, and I and the funny thing is. John McClane is John McClane, but he kind of gives that vibe to um, uh, Simon that he is uh, a thorn in his side many, many times. Yeah. So, if you've never seen uh, Die Hard 3, uh, definitely... you Honestly, you don't have to watch Part 2 to watch Part 3. You watch 1 to watch 3. That's how directly, or that's how, yeah, that's how directly it goes, and that's how, um, at, uh, that's how much two is kind of omitted from 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 where one and one and three pick up and such. So with that being said, I will catch you guys on the next one.